how's everyone doing today? I have an awesome Blu-ray Steelbook update. Five awesome Blu-ray Steelbook pickups right here. If you've seen any of these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them. And first up is Pinocchio 7th Anniversary 2 Disc Platinum Blu-ray Steelbook. And this is just one of the nicest looking steelbooks I've ever seen. It's a Best Buy exclusive. Oh, this goes for ridiculous amounts of money, so I was very happy to get it at a semi-reasonable price. This is one of my favorite animated films of all time, a classic. This freaked me out when I was a kid. Anything like whales, whales always freaked me out. I used to have like nightmares about whales. You got great memorable characters, Geppetto, Pinocchio, uh, Jiminy Cricket. Just can't say enough great things about this one. I assume everybody out there has seen Pinocchio. If you haven't, go see Pinocchio. All-time animated classic right there. And this has such a beautiful sheen to it, nice glossy cover, a um, bunch of special features as well. Uh, two disc Blu-ray bonus features, first time ever in high definition with up to 7.1 sound, never before seen deleted scenes, never before seen alternate ending, so that'd be pretty cool to check out. Uh, Disney view, expanded viewing experience, Cine Explorer experience, Pinocchio knows trivia challenge, uh, Pleasure Island Carnival Games, those strings attached, The Making of Pinocchio, Auto Commentary with Leonard Moulton, that's pretty cool, uh, Eric Goldberg and J.B. Kaufman, Geppetto Then and Now, uh, plus all DVD featurettes and more. And then the one disc DVD is a uh, full length film, uh, all new digital restoration, all new 5.1 Disney enhanced home theater mix, and all new music video. So a whole bunch of special features right there. And this goes right off right there and oh love that good old Jimmy Cricket over there and uh, fairy godmother this is such a beautiful looking steel book go ahead and open it up it's actually three discs in total uh, two blu-rays and one DVD right there there's the blu-ray uh, the film and there's blu-ray disc two's bonus features behind here and then the DVD the film and bonus features and they all have unique artwork unique disc artwork which I appreciate right there and there's interior artwork as well there's a Geppetto and Pinocchio I can't say enough great things about this uh, Blu-ray steelbook for Pinocchio one of the again one of the nicest steelbooks I've ever seen hands down so happy to have this in my collection. All-time classic. One of my all-time favorite animated movies. In my top two. Probably Grave of the Fireflies might be my favorite. Uh, just because I always was blown away by that one. Every time I watch it, I'm blown away by that one. This one too, but on a different level. This one takes me back to my childhood, Pinocchio. And next up is the Target exclusive Blu-ray Steelbook. Actually, it's a star metal pack of Iron Man 2 right there. And this is the lenticular cover. I think this might have been the first... Blu-ray steelbook slash metal pack to have a lenticular cover. And unlike a lot of the ones now that are like a magnetic, this is actually on here. You can't take that off. It's not a magnetic uh, piece where you can just remove. It's it's stuck on there. Uh, one thing I will say I don't like about this is the fact that they have the limited edition number right there out of about 30,000 up at the top. I think it should have been on the back. Uh, but a very cool Target exclusive right there. And there's the back right there. War Machine. Pretty cool. And again, you can tell it's a metal pack by the spine right there. It's a star metal pack as compared to uh, the Pinocchio one where it's solid. And it's a three disc combo set right here. A whole bunch of special features as well. I did keep this back part right there because I wanted to do a proper unboxing of this, but you'll just have to see it this way. And there's a digital copy as well. And yeah, I gotta take the security sticker off here. Just messing around with that, still gotta peel that all the way off. And there's the swing tray, disc one, disc two, disc three, uniform artwork. Uh, I wish there would have been a unique disc artwork. And you can see right there, there's no real spine right there. That's another reason you can tell it's a metal pack. And inside is the Hall of Armor for the interior artwork, which I appreciate there is artwork. And I'll go ahead and remove the last disc so you can see the other Iron Man suits down there. Mark 3 and 4 and then 1 and 2. Very nice star metal pack. I, I do like the design for it, especially the lenticular cover and it's glossy on the back. 
And I actually really liked Iron Man 2. It's my favorite of the Iron Man movies by far. I know everybody loves the first one. I thought Jeff Bridges, the villain, was a really weak villain. I thought the whole cast was better in Iron Man 2. Don Cheadle is a huge upgrade from Terrence Howard. Uh, Mickey Rourke as the villain Whiplash, huge upgrade over Jeff Bridges. And then a lot of other supporting characters in here as well, including Sam Rockwell, uh, who I think is a fantastic underrated actor. And it was great to see him in here. I hope he'll be in more movies coming out soon. Really enjoy him as an actor. And again, Don Cheadle is super underrated as an actor as well. The first movie I remember seeing him in was uh, Rebound, uh, the story of Earl the Goat Manigal, famous basketball player. And that movie just blew me away, including his performance. And the fact that Terrence Howard wanted more money to play Rhodey was just great to me. Get rid of him, bring in Don Cheadle, less money, way better actor, and smarter move on Don Cheadle's part as well, because he knows that it's going to be a series. He's going to be brought back to play this character over and over again. So, awesome move. Uh, I love the action sequences in here. Uh, everything about this movie was way better uh, than Iron Man 1, in my opinion. I know I'm in the minority in that. But it shocks me to think that people loved Iron Man 1. Iron Man 1 was just like average to me at best. Uh, the characters weren't as good. Uh, the actors, again, way better actors in this one. Uh, way better supporting cast, villain, uh, better effects, better action sequences. My only gripe about this one was the ending was kind of anticlimactic with the fight scene. I wanted a little bit more from that. But besides that, loved it. Great comic book action movie. A lot of fun. Great popcorn action third one was a big letdown for me. And next up is the German steelbook for Psycho. Brushed uh, matte finish right there. Really nice. All-time classic movie. Hitchcock, of course. Uh, Anthony Perkins blew me away in this performance. Totally creeptastic. Janet Lee, of course, as well. Uh, Vera Miles. Very impressive acting all throughout. And I love this cover as well. The famous shower scream shot right there. Love that scene. And Psycho's all broken up right there. Uh, some bonus features as well. The back is in German, uh, but it is a region-free Blu-ray, so that's pretty cool. And uh, go ahead and open it up. There is no interior artwork, but that's right. There is disc artwork. I'm happy there. And I definitely prefer this one over the uh, UK one. I like the German one much better, the design of it, and there's the spine. And this is a movie that I saw in film school years ago, and it just blew me away at the time. I hadn't seen it at the time, and it was a movie that I've never seen before. You're following this one character, and all of a sudden something happens, and you're no longer following that character, and I was just shocked by it. It just changed my whole viewing uh, perception of movies, and just rocked my world, <laughs> essentially, and it's an all-time classic. It's the granddaddy of all slashers as well, that nyeh, nyeh, nyeh. you know, it's just a classic, and very happy for the steelbook, an excellent looking one. Love the design, love the cover, beautiful. And next up is the Dutch Metal Pack for The Grey, with Liam Neeson on the cover right there. Absolutely love this movie, one of my favorite movies of 2012. Fantastic survival thriller movie, but it's much more than a survival thriller movie as well. Uh, there are some existentialism to it as well when he's having those flashbacks, especially one of my favorite scenes of the movie is he's having this flashback and then the plane goes down. That was such a, that, that flashback dream sequence was so amazing to me. It was just, it was beautiful, but the whole scene was tragically beautiful, uh, as is the whole movie in my opinion. That's how I would uh, classify this as tragically beautiful. First of all, I love movies set in the snow, so that immediately caught my attention. And I remember uh, on an interview with Liam Neeson, he was saying that there was actual uh, snow and that they had to wear all kinds of thermal suits underneath, uh, all the actors did, uh, because they were in British Columbia and it was really snowing and it wasn't CGI snow or anything like that. I wonder if that is 100% true. I wonder if they, you know, touched it up afterwards and added some more CGI snow to it or if it was all legit snow. I know he said it was, but it's, it's hard to believe that it was all, uh, I mean, who knows, maybe it really was. And, and that really elevates the film even more, considering the acting performances were amazing, in my opinion. Uh, some extras in here, behind the scenes, uh, featurettes, the extremes into the fray, man vs. nature, interviews, cast and crew. And again, it's in uh, Dutch, right there in the back, but again, it is region free. Love this one. And of course, you know, their plane goes down in Alaska. Uh, they're working, I think, in an oil rig, and uh, they go down and they're hunted by uh, wolves, and they're getting picked off one by one. And there's a few recognizable faces in here as well, uh, Dermot Mulroney, uh, a few other people, but of course Liam Neeson right there in the front. Go ahead and open it. Actually, I'll show you one more thing too. It's uh, the artwork goes all the way around, wraparound artwork. And there's the spine again, which isn't much of a spine. That's two discs, and I love the artwork on these discs. There's the DVD right there with the wolf, really cool, and then there's the Blu-ray right there with Liam Neeson. 
Super cool, love that. And there is interior artwork, which totally appreciate because not all steelbooks or metal packs have that. And this is the classic scene towards the end. Love that shot. And I know a lot of people hated the ending. I love the ending. And if you watch the movie, there is one quick shot, you know, some of the credits roll and there's one more quick shot. It's like a split second shot that I think is awesome. And uh, I, I love everything about this movie. I love the title, it really works. Uh, for the film, again, I like uh, the dream sequences and flashbacks, uh, you know, playing up a little bit more, adding some depth and layers to the movie. It's not just a straightforward survival film. There's layers to it, and I really appreciate that. I think a lot of people missed that aspect or didn't appreciate it enough. Oh, love the heck. Love everything about this movie. Uh, again, one of the best survival movies ever, in my opinion. And let me know your favorite survival movie and your favorite movie set in the snow. For me, it's John Carpenter's The Thing. It's just an all-time sci-fi, horror, classic. And then second would be The Shining. Third would be 30 Days of Night. Fourth would be Misery. Fifth would be probably The Grey now. Absolutely love this one. I also really liked uh, Frozen, uh, another great uh, survival thriller movie uh, that came out recently. I, I did like Alive, and I like a few other ones set in the snow as well. There's not a lot of great movies set in the snow, in my opinion. There's a handful, but not that many. Uh, I wish there were more, because I love snowy setting movies. But definitely let me know your favorite survival movie and favorite movie set in the snow as well. Oh, yeah, uh, Storm of the Century as well. got to throw that one out there, too. Super underrated. I was talking about that recently as well. Stephen King-based uh, uh, film adaptation right there. Storm of the Century. Totally check that one out creepy atmospheric. It is a little long. I'm not sure if it's like three hours or four hours or something like that. It was a mini series, uh, but definitely worth it. Great pacing. I sat through it straight through. Loved it. The Grey is a little under two hours. Just gonna throw that time out there. And uh, I could have watched it easily another hour's worth. Great cinematography, great action sequences, really taut suspense and thrills all throughout. And then next up is one of my favorite uh, post-apocalyptic movies, and another Dutch metal pack right here is The Road. There's the spine again. And uh, director John Hillicote uh, also directed uh, The Proposition, which is actually a really taut uh, crime western movie. And he recently did uh, Lawless as well. And I love the cast in here. Uh, Charlize Theron, Guy Pearce, Robert Duvall, uh, Viggo Mortensen. And this one is just such a washed out look to the feel that really uh, works for the overall tone of the movie, for the post-apocalyptic theme, and it's basically a father and son trying to survive this post-apocalyptic uh, world and trying to navigate it, try to stay away from you know crazy cannibals and find the shore and basically survive. And it's just moving, it's breathtaking, tragically beautiful again. Uh, the ending, the ending was a little kind of you know manipulative and cliche, a little too glossy and. I didn't necessarily love the ending, uh, but everything else about it was just perfection for me. And uh, one of my favorite post-apocalyptic movies now. I've watched it countless times since it's been out. And there you go, right there is the back. One of my favorite movies of the 2000s as well. Really nice brushed matte finish again, which most of these metal packs have that. And one thing I wanted to say too about the gray, uh, the title right there is Raised Up and Embossed. Just wanted to point that out real quick. That is not the case for the road, but very simplistic, and uh, the lettering right there for the actors are in gold, which kind of stands out. Go ahead and open it up and show you the inside. No interior artwork, but there's uh, disc artwork, which I appreciate. And definitely let me know your favorite post-apocalyptic movie as well. So there you go, there are my five Blu-ray steelbooks and metal packs, and if you've seen any of these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them as well. Leave me a comment or video response down below. Hope everyone's doing well. Take care.